Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Well today guys I'm gonna show you how to install a transmission cooler on your Toyota Tundra 2019 or 2014 or any other vehicle. It doesn't really matter if it's a Tundra or something else. Uh, so this is a 5.7 engine as you can see and actually what, what I'm showing you guys right now these are the brackets that are made. For the lower part of the transmission cooler those two left and right and then top portions that I need uh, I'll explain to you later in the video why I decided to use my own bracket instead of using their own plastic hardware that was those two I use the scrap metal that I had in my possession I bend it cut it over instead of going buying the plates I decided why not use what I have for the bottom two I had one of those angles I cut it in the middle and then did what I need to do to make the brackets. This is going to be a permanent solution. So let me show you what I mean. Those two brackets. So those two brackets will be sitting at the bottom. I have those holes. They're factory holes. I did not make those holes. See that right there? So the brackets will be sitting there on the rubber bushings. So these are the rubber bushings that I have. These are factory REM bushings that goes in there, and there's one goes there. And then the bracket will be sitting on top of it, just like condenser sit, just like factory. So it's going to be very similar to the factory. And I will explain to you later why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. So this is the bushing. This is the OEM. Not sure if aftermarket is available. If you care, this is the part number. You can look it up and see if you can find something. online so why did I decided to go with my own brackets instead of using plastic kit or plastic straps that comes with it well here is the thing for best efficiency or best performance or best results from your transmission cooler and how the lowest transmission temperature possible transmission cooler has to be mounted on its own, separate form from condenser or any other uh, heat sources. If you take this uh, transmission cooler and you attach it with those plastic straps, guess what? Your condenser gets really, really hot, very fast. You transfer heat from condenser or if it's a radiator, whatever you have behind there, to this, so now your transmission cooler is not efficient. It's only 50% efficient. It's, it's really basically, you're not doing really much with it. It's a waste of money and time and effort. Attaching it to a transmission, uh, attaching transmission cooler to a either radiator or condenser. It has to be. It's actually in the instruction says where to mount for best uh, performance, for best results. So how about inch and a half, maybe with, yeah, inch and a half, two inches away from a, condenser or it's on its own I'm not using those plastic straps to attach it first attaching it to the condenser or the radiator using plastic straps you're gonna damage sooner or later from vibration shaking you're gonna puncture it's gonna cut it into it and it's gonna damage the the fins and and the tubes those tiny tubes by mounting it separately First of all, it's going to work the way it's designed. You're not transferring heat from condenser radiator back to a transmission cooler and vice versa. So you have on its own, like from the factory. It's, this is actually set up is better than the factory. Because factory, it's a condenser and transmission cooler. Transmission cooler attached to the top of it. And I have a made video on that. If you want, there will be a link at the end of this video. So for our best... Uh, mounting position or mounting brackets for the transmission cooler the transmission cooler has to be flexible you see it moves if you look at the brackets it, it flexes it has to flex you see because the body or the front rat support it's it's steel it's not cast aluminum or magnesium or cast iron it, it flexes so it has to flex a little bit that's how I made the brackets, you know what I mean? You see, they're not just a straight brackets, they're on angles, and uh, 
they, they move. Same thing at the bottom. Bottom ones sits on a rubber bushing. Special rubber bushing. Same bushings are used here. Same thing up there. This bracket is not painted. It's from stainless steel because this is what I made and did not work out for me. So I end up using a stainless steel uh, piece that I had and it's not gonna rust, corrode. Doesn't look the best. I'll paint later, but for now, since the winter is coming, and I want to keep my transmission fluid temperature at low. I know it sounds crazy, but I'll show you in a video in the winter time how hot without this transmission cooler the fluid actually gets on those cars. It's, it's, it's amazing. So for the bushings, uh, this is the part number. If you care, you can look her up. And the way it worked out at the bottom, this is the, the, the design concept. I'm using this bracket. You see, see that bolt right there? Actually, these bolts that I'm using on this bracket is actually came from my old grill that I scrapped some of the stainless steel spars and bolts and uh, metal. So this is how I did. So it does not come off. It goes in and sits. I had to trim the bushing a little bit. That's the OEM factory bushings. Two of them. Uh, don't remember the cost. You can find out since you already know the part number. And so, so the bolt does not go go up or down. I use the nut and that's how it's working out for me so next step what i'm gonna do you gotta remove uh by the way um give you more details 2014 tundra 46 done how transmission cooler and up there to remove them and 2019 and up on on 57 on 46 from 2014 and up there and how transmission coolers on 2019 five sevens and up there is no more four six five sevens and up they remove the transmission cooler uh it's to save the money you know that's the only reason there is no any other ways to, to justify and it's it's gonna backfire on toyota for doing this stupid stuff like that for removing transmission cooler so uh you're probably gonna ask me why do i have a fan there well unfortunately um transmission cooler used to be standard this is toyota sequoia actually sequoia and tundra they're same thing so right there you can see it's a sequoia sequoia used to come with the transmission cooler too uh up to 2010 if i'm not mistaken 2011 and up they removed it dumb move stupid very dumb for toyota but because the sequoia they have a uh electric fan to cool off condensers it's an suv you need more air conditioning space it still has mechanical belt driven fan yes it has both which is it's a, you need to have on a on a sequoia may might help only in a tundra and here is the other thing the size i made a video what size this is i don't recall it so and i guess the next thing is to remove skid plate remove the skid plate so i can see how to route my my hoses let me show you there is few there is few bolts there is one there there is one there you remove those bolts those are size 10 then you have holes at the bottom of you see those holes these are the holes that have size 12 bolts. You got to remove them and then you can drop and slide out your skid plate. And before removing the skid plate, I'm going to drain the fluid because you have to install. I have to install this piece here, the thermostat, factory thermostat. Unfortunately, on five seven tundras, you cannot use aftermarket thermostats. You got to use factory. That's the only way it, it, it mounts. This is the mounting, it mounts to the uh, body of the transmission. But before I, before I do anything else, I'm gonna drain the fluid. Uh, to drain the fluid, make sure you break to loose your fill plug on your transmission. And I will show you in this video or maybe next video, fill plug. Then start draining. Once the fluid drain off, then start removing uh, your transmission uh, cooler. Yes, transmission cooler or transmission heat exchanger, whatever you want to call it, it's probably a correct way, not transmission heater, it's a heat exchanger. So, and I will show you in this video how to remove and but before I do anything else, let's remove the fluid. So after all the fluid is still dripping, drains off, next step what you want to do, start removing three bolts, size 12 millimeters. Start removing this round heat exchanger. Not removing, 
the heat exchanger itself but removing the bolts for heat exchangers that's what you want to remove there is one bolt there there is one on top there as you can I should get up, pick it up right behind there about it and there is one up there bolt right by the hose so, so these are three bolts that you're gonna remove those bolts so you can put aside the heat exchanger and remove there is a plate so the cooler is unbolted As you can see the fluid is dripping or another cooler that people call cooler is not really good it's a heat exchanger the proper term between the body and the heat exchanger there was this plate so this plate is being replaced with thermostat. So not sure if it's been starting to leak that that uh, uh, whatever that is moisture as you can see, or who knows what that is. Let me show you. All those O-rings would have to be replaced. You see that right there? I'm sure, the camera can pick it up. Hopefully. There is two O-rings. Those two O-rings would have to be replaced. I'll give you guys the part number and everything. So, as you can see, the hole, holes for mounting holes up there. And, uh, so, if you like so far what you've seen, tell you what, this is going to be the best video. It's already the best video on YouTube and will be the best. There won't be anything better. It's probably not will be. It is the best and there will be nothing better. No one's gonna show you all those details the way I'm showing you guys. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the bell, and here's the thing there is a link buy me a coffee. Go ahead, start supporting my channel. You know what I mean? There, there's so much more I want to do, but money is the limiting factor. Many of you guys already thanked me for saving you guys hundreds of dollars. We'll just do it yourself maintenance or some of the repairs that I've done it. Well, I want to ask you guys in return, help me support my channel, so help me, support my channel for more content to be provided, you know, I don't make a living out of this YouTube channel, I'm not a million, uh, you know, I don't have a million subscribers, actually, I just noticed something, Let's see if I can get better light, take a look, what do you guys see up there, inside the holes, not sure if camera can pick it up or not, but inside those holes there's a thread, and I said earlier that you have to use factory uh, thermostat. Well, look at that. Something to keep in mind. Does that look like a thread or not? It looks to me that there's are threads. So that means you can find a... You might even able to use the same uh, elbows or angles, whatever you want to call them, fittings that found on four, six tundras and screw them in inside there and use a... Yeah, but you still have to have a... So there is options. There's other options. I'm not going to tackle because you still have to use the heat exchanger. And without using factory plates or factory thermostat, you got to replace the heat exchanger with some other heat exchanger. Uh, there's other pair of heat exchangers that you can replace this and use something else. So there is other options, yes. But that's just something to think about. It. So let me show you guys. There is a plate. That plate right there on top. The I removed from the vehicle from my it will be from your either Tanja or your Sequoia. It doesn't really matter. Maybe even another theater is the same thing. So that's what you see is against the transmission body. This is the thermostat that I have. The location of the bolts exactly the same thing. Always verify. This thermostat already came with the O-rings, but I already purchased the O-rings anyways. I don't know if it came with it. So let's put it on a side and compare the thickness. See if we can do something, something like that, so you guys can see it for your own reference. I've already measured, as you can see, same exactly same thickness. That. Even the same company that makes for Toyota, who knows? It might even be the same for not just Toyota, they might find it on other brands like maybe Volvo. Uh, <coughs> Maybe Nissan uses the uh, ice in uh, some other companies. So who knows? You might find this uh, on some other brands too. So it's, it's 
not just on Toyota that it's limited to only Toyota. Uh, let me show you the, so I guess the part number would be for this thing is, let me show you the part number if anyone cares. Uh, so this is the part number, cooler assembly for 57 Toyota Tundra. It's from I think 2007 all the way through 2021, it's the same thing. Same part number because the same transmission. Here is some more information. If anyone cares, if anyone has bolts that are rusted or want to replace them, I'm going to replace mine because when I looked at them, they were starting to rust. This is the part number for these bolts. So here's the part number for the O-rings. The part number looks different, but when I compared this to this I don't see any difference in size or shape so I'm not sure if there is any difference or not I'm gonna remove the old ones compare them because the thermostat already came with it bolts that's right there the part number for the bolts and I already showed you guys uh, you can reuse them if you want if they're okay or you can get new ones I decided to go with the new ones since I don't want to be dealing with since mine already starting to warm some rust. Uh, that's pretty much it. Well, oh, and hose clamps for 3 8 hose. For 3 8 hose, these are the hose clamps factory already. We'll see, we'll try to use because my hose is 3 8 diameter, but I'll say a little bit smaller than other hoses. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to use it or not, but that's what it is. So now we're getting ready to install the transmission. Thermostat, so I removed the old O-rings. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna show you guys because this information is not available on YouTube. Let me put it this way. Of course, after my video, there will be other ones who will be trying to compete and make it at least what I have done. Let me show you the other side, see if I can get the camera on it. Not sure if the angle is good, but because I am from the other side, so now I'm gonna put the o rings here. Take it, you put it, you insert it. See, see how nice it goes. And of course, wipe it clean before you put anything back to it. You know what I mean? Before you install anything, wipe the dirt fluid out, clean it up. Same thing on the body of the uh, transmission. Clean everything up and... So there you go. Straightforward and simple. Quick tip. I had to remove the thermostat because there is no room. It's, it's pretty much impossible to put the hoses while the thermostat is attached. So I had to remove it. I was not torqued. It was just hand tied. So make sure you... Before you install the thermostat, put the hoses in. These are like seven or eight feet hoses. They're longer than they should be, but I will cut them. I'd rather have longer than shorter and have to remove it again. So uh, just make sure you the surface are all clean. When you reinstall it, not sure if camera can pick it up or not, but take your bolt, first bolt, and sort it. And start it. So let's try another bolt. So it's very tricky actually to get here. So after you're done checking the fluid level, you know you've done it correctly. You torqued the overflow bolt, your field plug, your drain bolt, everything is torqued. The last step, you, the two last things you want to do, you want to pull the pin from your uh, thermostat. Make sure it's it's closed. That right there, since this is the first time it's been pulled, you want to remove this. So this is it, the final product of installing a transmission cooler with transmission thermostat. This is what it looks like. Like I said earlier, 
uh, put the hoses, install the hoses, torque them before you actually install the thermostat. Because if you install the thermostat, you're not going to be able to install the hoses. There is no room. So I will do my best to show you guys all the routing, how everything went. So take a look. I will do my best. There is not much space. Not sure how much camera I can pick it up. Don't forget to remove the pin from the thermostat to let it open or to close the thermostat. That bracket right there that you see, it's part of the heat exchanger and you can, you can unbend and bend, you know, it's flexible, but be careful, don't break it because you don't want to break, there's a weld there, but it's welded at the connection. So that's how I routed the hoses. I think this is the best way. If you think there is a better way to route your hoses, you can drop me a comment. Uh, in some places I'm going to install, install a heat blanket like to prevent hoses from getting hot from the transmission. And I will show you in this, uh, in this video, at the end of this video. So, so this is how I do This is how I routed the hoses. When you route your hose underneath here, you see the axle. Be careful, make sure the hose is supported somewhere at the top so you're not rubbing on the axle. Because mine is super. I'll show you how I did my way of supporting it. The best part about this installation, I did not have to drill a single hole anywhere, neither for the cooler nor for the hoses. And now the tricky part. So that's where the hose is supported. How is it supported? I'll show you the detail. I was using one of those. Uh, I had this for like I think 20 years. I bought it for something, never used it. It was laying around, so I ended up using it. What you want to do, there is holes there. That uh, See, there is two, two bolts or two nuts. One is there and one is there. On your left side, there is a hole up there in the body of the frame. You slide this U-shaped bracket or the, or the clamp, whatever this thing is called, and then there's another hole right there and you come out. I had to put a lot of spacers and the plate and I will show you more better details than what you see with better explanation. See, that's, that's how I did. So the hoses are supported. They will never be touching. They'll never be touching anything, neither the axle or any exhaust parts. Uh, let's see if I can get you guys better, better views. How I did. I'm moving too fast, just pause it, I'll try my best. Not enough room to do a, uh, not enough room, it's hard to get with the lighting, but I will do my best. Then it goes underneath there, over top of the power steering rack. Then we come out here. That's the best way I found. If someone has a better way, do it, drop me the comment. See, it goes right underneath the power steering hose. Right, right underneath the power steering hose. Let's see if I can get you better. See, right underneath the power steering hose. That stainless steel clamp, clamp kind of bracket. It's a homemade. The hole was there, the sides or the I just used, found all the bolts and I made a bracket from a recycled grill part, stainless steel. Hole was in a frame with a thread. I just used the bolt, bolt size and the thread, uh, thread pattern. It's the same size and thread pattern as, the, as it here, as your skid plate mounted. Skid plate, see those bolts? Where I have grease, there's a, the way where the skid plate is. So it's the same size 
and same pattern. Make sure you don't, when you install something like that, you do not crush the holes. Because you can see, it can move freely. So, then I'm routing right underneath. Stabilizer link underneath the radiator. As you can see, underneath the razor ready and on the top of the uh, power steering lines for the cooler, power steering cooler. I'm running them right on top of it. I'm not sure what you can see here. Some of the hoses. I guess you get a better view from this angle. I, there is there's a plastic cover piece that I removed, thinking maybe I can route the hoses from the top. I could, but then it's still, you know, you see power steering lines up there, right there. So there is no really easy way out. Uh, you still would have to cross through or be in contact. And then here, the hoses come out because they're one here as you can see the hoses are not touching cool the cooler and I can add a bracket layer bracket layer made to support them so if they're maybe gonna be flapping around which is it doesn't look like it so so that's what it is that's how I installed it the transmission cooler. If I need to add a fan, I can add a fan. If I, if this uh, horn is going to be in the way, I can relocate or I can remove completely. That's not an issue at all. So uh, that's it. Let's see if I can give you some few more shots. Okay. Give an explanation. This is. I'll post the link. For the size where you can buy this u-shaped uh, clamp bolt whatever it's called so the way i did you insert it you insert this just like that you loop it around and you come out from the other other hole holes are in a frame already you set it what i did i used this here this here came from a garage door one of those rulers that let me show you what I see that right there the bracket that holds the garage door uh, wheel ruler. So I have plenty of those things laying from replacing a couple of garage doors on my buying garage doors. So I have extra extra ones. So what I did, uh, I unbent one of those, drilled the holes for the size, and it was laying across. So once I, once I inserted this here, this inside, I put a plate across. Put bunch of extra washers or spacers or something because otherwise it will be loose and flapping around. I don't want it to have flapping around. You can put use bigger nuts or washers, whatever you want it. So you have so you can compress this uh, compress this plate closer to the body or closer to the frame, and so this is does not move anywhere. Once that done, I put in a uh, nut nut there. Then what the next step was I put a so this is the next step. After putting the plate, a plate across here, across here, a uh, bunch of washers or not, and then I put this uh, U-shape, just like that, up. So then I put a hose here, two hoses running, just like that, two hoses, one side, one by side, one here, one there. And in between here, I put a spacer, a piece of pipe that I had, just enough so I can put a locking nut on here. And the point, that's the point or the, the reason for the spacer, so I don't crush the hose. I don't want to crush the hose. And I don't want the hose to be sliding if there is any movement against the threads. I want the hose to be sliding against smooth surface. Let me show you what I mean by spacer in case anyone wonders. So that's the spacer I'm talking about, but much bigger, much wider, so it's enough. So because if you use something that small, you will crush your hose. You don't want to crush your hose. You want to make sure the hose is 
it's not too loose but it's at the same time uh, it's not crushed then I put a locking knot, knot on the top of here locking knot is something like this but this is this is too big way too big what I mean by locking knot it has a plastic inside here plastic inside there so to put it on it's it's you have to have some put some effort into it at the same time to remove it it would not come out easily you gotta put the same amount of effort that's I put a locking knot of course not that size I could find another one with the correct size so that's how it would be So this is the setup right there, of course, the proper size knot, and the hose is running here, like I showed you earlier in the video. Same thing, I put the locking knot here, regular knot and the locking knot. So this is probably an overkill, but it will never come loose, it will, it's pretty much a permanent solution, you know what I mean. I want to make sure I do it right first time, I don't want to go back there and redo it. And of course, I'll drive. One month, a week, I'll go double check, make sure nothing is loose, nothing is rubbing. And if it is, I'll fix, I'll keep you guys updated. This is the heat shield that I was talking about that I'm going to install. Uh, I'll show you in this video. And this is the, I'll post a link. For the stuff that I know, I'll post a link for the stuff I don't know. Uh, the size of the nuts, you would have to find out from your local hardware store or online I don't know the sizes it just I did not buy this stuff it's like 20 years old I had it in my possession at least for 20 years as far as I can remember I bought it for something I never use it I think for a TV antenna or something something like that you know what I mean That's, I just some of the stuff that I have I found it's like 20 plus years old I had it never used it uh, and now I'm 20 years later I'm using it so so this is that's what it is you know what I mean uh, so there you go, the last step, what you want to do after you put everything together, fill up with the fluid, you check the fluid level, is you want to test drive, make sure it doesn't leak, and it does not leak. Uh, just a little tip, a few tips that I want to give you guys. When you torque those uh, bolts on the hoses, when it's torque, try spinning the hose, like moving uh, left to right, if it moves, then you gotta apply more force so it does not move. Uh, the other thing that I wanna, I wanna mention, there's a plastic here actually, she's open. And uh, maybe it's worth having it, not the way I have it done it here, those uh, in and out from this direction and going out. Maybe good option, maybe not, I'm not sure. After I've completed my hose uh, routing, I realized that maybe I should try it differently. Maybe, I don't know. It's two options, either the, the way I run uh, underneath or running it here and, and uh, put it in a different location. That's something to consider. Before you permanent them out, not permanently, it's, nothing's really permanent it's when it's bolted. Before you mount, try running the hoses. I'm not sure because of the bend, because it says um, in the instruction, it, the radius should not be of the bend hose should not be less than three inches. It's because otherwise you're gonna, you know, Cause the hose to to bend so i'm not sure if running the hoses here will help cutting the holes in the plastic or not but something to consider because you still have hoses right there you're still going to be touching something either at the bottom or on the side you know what i mean there's no really way out and earlier i said i'm going to put like a um, heat blanket or shield at the bottom there i will do it later and i will update you guys with the video at first i want to try it how it works out for me uh since it's winter is approaching and i am in in the area where it gets it gets cold but not extremely cold could not extremely cold so so that's it uh don't forget to subscribe to my channel i want to thank you for watching this video 